Welcome to Living History with Ted Goldsboro and today's guests, Miriam Phillips and Nolan Atkinson. Both have been here before, so we're experienced people and I very much appreciate their coming. Uh, they had to take off work to be here and we have a very important topic of affordable housing in Lower Marion. So I thank you both for coming and uh, we'll start off with is there a problem with uh, low-income people finding houses in Lower Marion? <laughs> well, I think you reminded us uh, with the 1937 Comprehensive Plan that even in that document, housing, especially in South Ardmore and Bryn Mawr, was even referenced then as something that needed to be addressed mm -hmm. and expanded upon for residents who were lower income in Lower Marion Township. So. And that's 70 some years ago. I so think I would add to that, that uh, in Lower Marion, the uh, difficulties with having affordable housing were always linked to the high cost of land and the inability to reduce land cost uh, meant that builders, even if they built a modest building, uh, would be building a uh, development which would not be uh, suitable for uh, those who are in the moderate income or low income mm -hmm. uh, category. Mm -hmm. We're lucky in a way that back in 1900, some quote unquote workforce housing, some row houses and twin houses were built on Central Avenue in Bryn Mawr and in Ardmore on, on West Spring Avenue. and that housing is still being used. So it's lasted 115 or more years. It seems as though today's developers who are putting in seven, eight story buildings do not, are not in favor of having some units designated as affordable housing. Why, why is that? Why don't they want that? The areas where affordable housing can work are typically more pop population um, density filled. And so when developers build big projects, obviously they need to make a profit. Uh, and if they build high density apartment buildings or condos, those may be associated with things like condo fees, um, which can prevent the ability to sprinkle in lower income units mm -hmm. within those buildings. Uh, and Does the township offer subsidies? It, the township has uh, moved in the direction of offering incentives to um, developers who wish to have that density uh, that if they do not include affordable units then they contribute to other projects where affordable housing initiatives are already being um, accomplished and supported. Okay. So uh, I think there's a little bit of a workaround. It's, it's not a, um, a successful solution to introduce lower income people into a development where they can't meet, you know, the ongoing costs mm -hmm. of ownership within that development. I was thinking that we should be showing some images and when some people think of Lower Marion Township they think of large properties. Uh, this is a fairly new one in Gladwin uh, on Marion Square Road and, and uh, this one's out in Haverford. And this is pretty old, this is maybe 1880s or so. I so, uh, forget the name of it, Dolabrand. Um, and I do have some housing on, for example, School Lane which is off Ardmore Avenue near the Ardmore Library. And those are, I think they're row houses by the parking lot to Ardmore House. Combination, I think, row oh, and maybe row and twin. twin. maybe, mm -hmm. okay. And where else do we have twin or row houses in Ardmore and Bryn Mawr? Uh, Long Prospect Avenue comes to mind, Warner Avenue. Yes, yes. okay. Marion uh, Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yes, south side of Lancaster Avenue right. is where the row houses mm -hmm. <coughs> were built. Uh, uh, 
many, many years ago, um, as you say, uh, some still stand, but that was typically where uh, families uh, with modest uh, incomes uh, lived, and that just carries right down if you just sort of think about Lancaster Avenue as sort of being a dividing line going into uh, Ardmore. Uh, uh, you see the same uh, kind of housing patterns. And indeed, that pattern goes further west out beyond Lower Marion into mm. Wayne and, mm. and, and some of those communities mm. in that area. Mm. And the quote, living on the other side of the tracks. You said that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember General Becton said that uh, when he was growing up at the Bryn Mawr Court Apartments by Baldwin School. Yes. Uh, that people would look at him and they'd say, little boy, are you lost? What are you doing here? You belong <laughs> over there. So I think that's, uh, I laugh, but I do think that's a very appropriate saying that certainly uh, in much of the early and mid-20th century, uh, the term living on the other side of the tracks was mm -hmm. quite appropriate. Mm -hmm. For those with lesser incomes. Yeah. Now, it seems as though the <laughs> the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Is that, can you verify that <clears throat> statistically in America? That there's more of a divide mm -hmm, income-wise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's quite accurate. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, for housing. Yes, yes. Okay. And then we uh, have uh, some notes here about the 1937 plan. Uh, future needs for low-cost housing are expected to intensify. The president's scarcity and new construction in this field is not attractive to the usual speculative builder, which is what we had said. Uh, the subject of new housing for those in the lower income groups is recommended for the earnest consideration of all public and private agencies. Now, what uh, Nolan, we give you credit for being the first commissioner, or the first person in modern 1970s uh, history to help get affordable housing in Arbor. How did that happen? Uh, <clears throat> actually, there was a commission to study uh, for uh, on housing and and and. Uh, development for Bryn Mawr and Ardmore, uh, which the NAACP uh, was very active in. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had engaged planners to help uh, do a plan. Uh, and there were some very sus uh, specific recommendations for uh, Ardmore. Uh, one was that uh, the township consider uh, building housing on on, on land that had belonged to Haverford College, um, uh, and the other was that the township consider building on uh, the air rights of the Ardmore Avenue parking lot where Ardmore House now stands. Mm -hmm. uh, so those were uh, uh, two recommendations. I go back to my earlier comment that both of those were designed to try and find land that could be where you were not paying market value for land. Uh, for a variety of reasons, we never had success with the uh, Haverford College um, endeavor. Um, and so we uh, formed something known as the Ardmore Community Development Corporation, uh, and this was in the late 60s. Um, and uh, I was very, very active uh, with the Ardmore com uh, uh, Community Development Corporation, and and ultimately that entity, uh, through a subsidiary, purchased and it was a nonprofit corporation, purchased um, uh, the land at the corner of uh, of of Ardmore and Spring Avenue, where the 16 condominiums were built in 1974. Uh, that had been a vacant property uh, where there was uh, no housing. It looked like a good spot, um, and so we were we attempted to raise funds to help acquire the land. 
We got a lot of contributions from folks up and down the main line. Uh, and um, uh, ultimately, I can remember one year uh, we had the community put a Christmas tree right up on that mm -hmm. empty lot mm -hmm. uh, with the view that uh, uh, that probably was in about 1972 uh, when we had made the down payment mm -hmm. on the land, mm -hmm. but we were still had a ways mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, uh, that is where the 16 condominiums uh, were okay. built, uh, federally funded, subsidized. I see in 19, we have to watch our time, yes. about two minutes to a break here. Uh, I see in the 1948 Atlas that there were a couple of houses there, but for some reason they got torn down? Or Correct. Got, okay. They were torn, yes. So it was an Correct. empty lot. Yes. And this brings up a, a very important point that maybe we'll discuss after the break, is trying to find land where affordable housing can be put in. and. I guess developers aren't too willing to do it, so you have to find developers that are amenable to not making quite as much profit? Or you have to go to the nonprofit uh, sector mm -hmm. and find community corporations uh, working with assistance of, of other agencies okay. to do the work. Uh, after our break, let's talk about Margaret Collins for a minute and Maisie Hall. Uh, two African Americans who, before our, our time, were involved with us. Uh, this is Ted Goldsboro. We're talking about affordable housing with Marianne Phillips and Nolan Atkinson, and we'll be right back after a break. <laughs> <laughs> 